The Hounds of Winter by Jonathan Green. Running. He had to keep running. The snow flew up in flurries around his feet as the peasant raced on through the night. The biting cold forgotten and the bundle of firewood he had been carrying now discarded. His only thoughts were of the hounds baying behind him. Above the choking, tearing rasp of his breath, in his eyes seared throat, he could hear them panting and barking. Muffled by the snow and trees, their howls took on an echoing, almost literal quality. He dared not turn to snatch a fleeting glance of his pursuers for fear of what he might see if he did. He did not know what they were or where they came from, and he did not care. He only knew that he could not let them catch him. Through the dark silhouettes of tall pines, he saw the dim lantern light shining in the window of his hovel. When his foot snagged in an exposed tree root hidden under the snow, a searing pain blazed in his ankle as he fell. In panic, the man tried to scramble to his feet, but as he did so, his torn ankle all but screamed out in protest. Terror helping him ignore the pain, he staggered on. With every limping step, shelter from the cruel winter night and the dark horrors it held came even closer. Only another 60 yards and he would be safe. But with every desperate step, the snarling of the hounds got nearer. He had not realized how near until he was suddenly tucked backwards with a fierce jerk as the first of them sank its claws into the calf of his leg. Crying out, Ah! He landed spread eagled in the freezing snow, the breath knocked out of him. The rest of the pack were upon him before he could spit the snow from his mouth to draw another frozen breath. In a few moments of snarling savagery, it was over. As quickly as they had fallen on the man, the hounds tossed the body aside and bounded off again into the night. <coughs> Peck was closely followed by the masters of the hunt. Flaming hoofs and iron-shot feet trampled the corpse into the hard ground, white turning to crimson with a hiss of steam as the man's hot blood soaked into the solid snow. The hounds of winter were abroad once more. With a crash, the inn door was flung open and a chill gust of wind drove the warmth from the room. Shut the door! A gruff voice shouted from the table of hard-bitten adventuring types. Midwinter's Eve on the fringe of the northern wastes was as bitterly cold as any of the weather sages of Ertengrad could predict and outside was where the inn's clientele wanted to keep it that night. With a resounding boom, the portal was sealed again by a second gust of wind and the air inside the snug was still once more. Everything about the inn told its age. Huge oak beams, the size of whole trees, formed the bracing structure which supported the century-old filth-coated rafters. Around the beams, walls thick enough to withstand a besieging army had been built. Something about the huge stones gave the impression that they had been here long before mortal man had decided to build an inn in this inhospitable place. The bar took up most of the wall and on the opposite side of the hall-like room a fire blazed in the vast stone fireplace. Between the bar and the fireplace were tables, benches and stools, 
most of which were occupied by a combination of local villagers enjoying a warmer atmosphere than that which they could find at home, Kislevich soldiers having completed their patrols of these dangerous lands and hired swords making the most of the money they had earned and always on the lookout to make more. We haven't a moment to lose! Barricade the doors and windows! Arm yourselves! The newcomer shouted above the hubbub. Casual with fainted disinterest, the party of adventurers seated in the center of the bar turned to see who had disturbed their quiet drinks in the warm. Standing just over the threshold was an old man, his age-lined face testimony to a life of hardship but also of great inner strength. A thick mane of white hair fell back from his forehead, and his wide jaw was buried beneath a luxurious beard. He gripped the staff like a tree branch in one great hand, and around his broad shoulders rested the hide of some unfortunate beer, its claws now pinned by a clasp about the stranger's neck. They're coming, I tell you! We must prepare for battle! Calm yourself, old man. Calm yourself. Black-haired Torben Bendo said, rising from the table of adventurers, his huge frame blocking the old man's view from the fireplace. Why don't you have a drink and let us get on with ours? There is no time for that. Do you not know what night it is? Of course we do, Torben retorted. Not all of us are suffering from dementia as yet. <laughs> it's Midwinter's Eve. But not just any Midwinter's Eve. Tonight is also the conjunction of the two moons. Orkans Grafen, a gaunt, toothy warrior, rodent-like features and spiky moustache almost belied any human heritage fumed and sneered in the vague direction of the newcomer. What's he rantling on about now? The conjunction of the two moons only happens once every 200 years, when both the moon and dark moon are directionally opposite of each other, on midwinter's eve, dead on midnight, their fell powers pulling equally upon this world. So what does this have to do with us? Torben asked flippantly. It is upon us tonight. Do you not know the legend? What legend? Oh. Oh. The stranger wailed, despair cracking his voice. Too many have forgotten. Is it really so long? Torben strolled over to the bar and leaned back against it casually. Do you know this character? He whispered through the side of his moustache to the round landlord as the old man paced about the bar. I don't know his real name. The chubby and red-faced barman replied as he tried to buff up a dull pewter tranquet with a filthy rag. But everyone around here calls him Old Man Mountains. He's an odd fellow. He's been around for as long as anyone here can remember. People sometimes tell of seeing him standing through the snow drifts up beyond the tree line, but they always steer clear of him. He's never actually come down into the village before, though I would be careful not to anger him if I were you, the barman warned. Don't worry, he doesn't frighten me. I have dealt with this type before. In truth, Orban Bendov had indeed encountered many strange old men in his time as a mercenary on the borders of Kislev, and the obscure pronouncements of this adult mountain dweller troubled him about as much as a goblin did to dragon. Yet despite the stranger's obvious great age, Orban noticed that there was a certain bearing about him. He held himself tall and proud, looking every bit a man of thought as well as action, and Torben was sure that this great bearskin cloak hit powerful muscled arms. 
Moving back to his table, Torben motioned to the enigmatic character with his trunkard. Come then, tell us your story, old man. Make it a good one and we might just buy you a drink for your troubles. The stranger stopped pacing and turned his piercing amber eyes on the mercenary and his companions. We have little time, so listen well, he said, coldly determined, and I will tell you of the Hounds of Winter. Oren Scarfen rose from his stool and swept his hand to it sarcastically, but the old man refused to sit and kept pacing with nervous energy. It was a night much like this, when people gathered around their campfires to tell each other stories that make the blood run cold. It was the time of the tide of chaos rising in the land. It was Midwinter's Eve. Get on with it! I thought time was short! Garfin jeered. All but the old man laughed. <laughs> An Imperial Patrol was escorting a wagon train from Talbenheim to Kislev. Three days into the journey, a Chaos Warband attacked. The old man's earnest voice held the attention of the assembled warriors. Perhaps this was to be a fine tale after all. Outnumbered, the patrol was routed. Many brave men were killed by beastmen and chaos warriors that night. The soldiers thought themselves all doomed. The old man paused, coughed a clear throat and gestured for a tranquil. Badenov passed over Scarfins, stopping the latest complaining with a wicked grin. The stranger supped a few mouthfuls before continuing. Then from out of the wilds came a being who seemed to be as much beast as men. He wielded deadly, sorcerous powers and fought against the Chaos Vermin. It was a wizard come to aid the soldiers in their fight. By now, Old Man Mountain had quite an audience, his story gripping even the most hard-bitten adventurers in the bar. But the fool enemy was too strong and in the end there was nothing for it but flight, to spread word of the coming of chaos to Kislev and maybe the empire beyond. Hurry it along, old timer, Oren interrupted. Cut to the chase! Listen, listen, the old man reproached his heckler. Every detail is important, you must hear it all. Very well, mountain man, Orm said, ignoring his glare. Tell us everything, but get on with it. The Winter King, champion of chaos, led his warband. This infamous act of cruelty had carved him a reputation as bloody as his crimes. He paused a moment. As the survivors of the wagon train fled from his clutches, the Winter King called on his dark gods for help. And from the red mist of battle, his vile chaos spawn's powers shaped the dread forms of demonic hounds. The old man sniffled the air dramatically. Picking up the scent of the fleeing survivors, the abhorrent beasts bounded off into the night in pursuit of their human prey. The old man shot his audience a glance to make sure that he now had their full attention. Satisfied that this was so, he went on. Though it appeared that the wild man's arrival had been a stroke of good fortune, the wizard had in fact been trailing the warband for some time. The winter king had stolen a magical crown from an ancient burial mount, a crown imbued with the power to command the forces of chaos. The wizard knew that if Korn's champion reached the empire, he might unite the twisted creatures of the Dark Gods. Dwelling within forests of shadows into an unstoppable army, the warband had to be stopped before it reached the Empire's gates. 
Where did the survivors make their stand then? Corbin interrupted. I was just getting to that, the old man snapped, taking a moment to compose himself again before resuming the story. The wizard led the survivors to a circle of standing stones carved with powerful ancient runes and sigils. By accident or design, it was a fitting place for their last stand. The brave soldiers fought beyond their measure, but died one by one until only the wizard remained. Even in death, however, their energies combined with the magic of the place to imbue him with a terrible power. With the roar of the beast, the wild sorcerer shed his last vestige of humanity and took on the aspect of a mighty bear. Raging and clawing, he drove off the servants of chaos, those suffering terrible wounds himself. The old man's words were so vivid and so heartfelt that all who listened were held entranced. Trapped and beaten, the Winter King slunk way into the darkness to die, cursing the wizard. He vowed that though the wizard had won the battle, the war would continue in death and beyond, he would return. The old man looked up, his story done. This is the saga of the Winter King. A heady silence hung over the bar. At least Torben spoke. Well, you have earned that drink. That was quite some tale. But it's not just a tale. It's real, I tell you. Now is the time. The moons are in conjunction and the battle will be fought again. A thunderclap shattered the night, shaking the inn and causing every lantern to flicker. <laughs> Above the winter's gale could be heard the savage baying of hounds. All eyes turned to face the stranger in disbelief. They are here, he said. <coughs> Thorben's hand moved instinctively to the hilt of his sword. As the inn's customer listened, they could also make out the sound of harness jangling, the snorting of steeds and the clink of armor. It is time, old man! Came an icy voice from beyond the door, heavy with damned resignation and full of menons. Are you within? I am! The old man called back, his voice strong and unwavering. Are you ready to die again? We will see. Then prepare to defend yourselves. An order was shouted and it was as if all hell had been unleashed. The first of the dogs assailed the inn. Shutters splintering under their claws and muzzles as the monstrous creatures tried to batter their way inside. Now this is just too much, Torben exclaimed, raising to his feet, sword already in hand. One old lunatic I can just about stomach, but this is going too far. Are you with me, lads? There was a growl of agreement from the mercenary's companion, and they jumped to their feet, weapons at the ready. Ah, uh, at last, the brave warriors remembered their parts in all this. The white man stranger said enigmatically. Together we will drive the evil from this place. Ignoring the old man, the mercenary adjusted his armor jerkin and continued to urge his band of fighters on. Come on, lads. Let's give this deviance a taste of cold steel. They'll soon calm their appetite for destruction. 
By now the rest of the inn's customers were also preparing to fight. It was plain that their only chance of survival depended on it. Follow me! The beer-cloaked stranger shouted above the blood-curling howls of the hound, the war cries of chaos warriors and the braying of beastmen. Flinging open the great oak door of the inn, the old man stood silhouetted for a moment in the flickering light of the torches carried by the warband, snow plastered to his hair and beard. Stay within the light cast by the inn, he offered as a parting piece of advice, then leapt out into the night. The defenders followed unhesitatingly as if the old men held greater sway over them than they realized. Once outside the inn, it appeared to Torben as though all hell had broken loose. The great dogs that assailed them were no creatures born from the martial plain, but blood-red monsters with slavering jaws and scaly hides. The vile flesh hounds were possessed of an unbridled fury and hurled themselves at the humans, trying to clamp an arm or a leg in their teeth to rend their victim limb from limb. Beyond the vanguard formed by the demonic creatures pressed a rabble of brutish beastmen and spike-armored warriors, their faces hidden by huge horned helmets. As Torm fought on, swinging blow after powerful blow at the mutants and hounds around him, he could not help noticing that at the heart of the warband there fought others whose faces were visible and of deathly paler. At the back of the serried lines of mutants and madmen, a shadowy, almost spectral figure appeared to be directing them all. A spear glowing with orange flame streaked through the swirling snow hurled by the old man. The missile exploded among the masses of beastmen, the full stench of scorched furor filling Torben's nostrils. Though the old man has some magic at his disposal too, Torben thought to himself. There was a lot more to him than first appeared. Something else was happening as well. As he fought, it fell to Torben as if his body was being invigorated by some renewing power that sent new strength surging through his arms and legs, stimulating muscles that should have become tired from the constant exertion and giving him the stamina to keep battling on. From the curious expression on the faces of his fellows, the same thing was plainly happening to them as well. Through the swirling storm, Morse Leap's light began to dim at the time of conjunction neared. Corbin had lost track of how long the battle had been raging. The ragged collection of defenders were greatly outnumbered and, although they fought with their vigor increased, they were horrified to see those that were struck down rise up again as shadowy wrath and rejoin the fray. The battle raged on, Corbin fending off the blows of the enemies and thrusts and parries given extra impetus thanks to the inexplicable invigoration energy affecting him. As he fought he almost felt like some energy was guiding his hand. It was like no other conflict he had ever taken part in before, and there had been many. It seemed to the mercenary that he had fought this battle before, although not in this lifetime. One by one, despite their efforts, Corbin's companions were being struck down by these otherworldly chaos fiends. Shooting anxious glares around him, he saw their bodies lying motionless in the trampled snow, but there was no sign of any blood or wounds of any sort. With an abruptly silenced cry of a surprise, ah! Orban fell to a wraith sword. Do not be concerned for your friends! The white-haired withered, reassuring tones came through the snow flurries. It is almost time, we must hold them but a little longer. The chaos horde, 
and particularly the leader, appeared to be coming more and more agitated at their failure to break through the defenders' lines and assail the inn. The beastmen and warriors were driven by some overwhelming need unknown to torment the others. Their shadowy leader screamed orders to the rebel, his desperation adding an intensity to their attack and making the defenders struggle to hold them off seem all the more important. At last the heavenly bodies completed their movement and an all-encompassing darkness fell over the battlefield. Now the only illumination came from the horde's torches and the interior of the inn. Now it is time, the old man hissed with satisfaction. Retreat into the inn! At his command, the few survivors hurried back towards the welcoming glow of the great stone portal, dragging the chill bodies of their fallen comrades with them. As Torben dragged Oren's body over the threshold, he could see not a mark on him, yet he had himself seen him struck down with a ghostly blade. When all were safely back inside, the door was barred and the defenders prepared to meet their end. Where is the old man? Torben exclaimed suddenly, looking around. He must still be outside! The landlord realized with horror. He'll never survive out there alone! But we will survive in here together? A haggard local lamented. With a chilling clarity that cut through the howls of the Chaos Hounds, the defenders heard the temple bell start to chime midnight down the valley. As the last chime tolled, the great war of a raging beast drowned out the barking of the terrible hounds. Curiosity driving them, Corbin and the others leapt to the shuttered windows and tried to peer through the cracks to see what was going on, but all was black as pitch. They could see nothing, but they could certainly hear the slaughter that was taking place beyond the walls of the inn all too clearly. The defenders remained transfixed listening to the wailing of the Chaos Horde and were chilled to the marrow by the bellowing of the monsters that had suddenly appeared amidst the carnage. At last the sounds died, the cries of those apparently still able to flee fading in the distance. Even the humans did not dare move from the protection of the inn, for fear of what they might find outside. Dawn came, and with it the confidence to leave the inn. Unbearing the great door, Torben cautiously ventured out into the crisp, cold morning. The snowy ground was littered with the foul bodies of vast bestial hounds rapidly decaying in the grey light. Here and there lay the corpses of a beastman of iron-clad warriors, but there were too few to account for the sounds of slaughter that they had all heard at midnight. Of the bodies of the Chaos Lord and his awful retinue, there was no sign. Neither was there any trace of the old stranger, dead or otherwise, or any monstrous beast. Where had they all gone? Torm wondered. The old man could not have survived the onslaught of the entire warband and the midnight monster. He peered in alarm as a set of clawed, bear-like footprints that led away through the snow towards the mountains. There were no matching prints leading towards the scene. Mercenary! The landlord's bewildered, astonished voice called from inside the inn. Your companions are returning to life! Corbin hurried back inside. 
On the floor where his body had been laid, Oren was sitting up, rubbing his head and looking around him be dazed. The others, who had also fallen into the wrath-like fiends, were similarly steering as if awakening from a deep sleep. How can this be? Corbin asked in amazement, kneeling down beside his friend. What happened to you? When I was struck by the wrath, it felt as if something chill and evil had struck me, Oren said vaguely. I was consumed by the most agonizing death throats, which I'll match the wound I thought I had received. It was as if I was reliving the heroic demise of someone else from another time. Then I blacked out. Torben stood up rubbing his head with both hands as if that would somehow help him to make sense of the night's bizarre events. At last he spoke again. Oh, landlord, I think opening time has come early today. Crack open that cask of Buckman 60. I know you've been keeping back. I think we've all earned it. The mercenary looked back through the open doorway at the battlefield. What exactly had taken place during the conjunction of the two moons? The sun had struggled through the snow-choked clouds, casting its van light into the portal. On one of the ancient cornerstones of the inn, it picked out a number of age-worn markings etched into the stone. Stepping over to the threshold to take a closer look, Corbin ran his fingers over the carved symbols. The stone was huge, apparently set deep into the ground. Something told Torben that it had lain here a long time, longer even than this old inn had stood here. The building had no doubt to be made from the local stone. Despite having borne the weathering of the elements for centuries, the markings were plainly ancient symbols. The adventurer traced the shape of an arrow under the lichen. His curiosity satisfied, he gave a shrug and returned to the bar and the hopeful expectation of a quiet drink at last. As the solid oak door closed behind him, the rusted inn sign creaked in the breeze. Its picture of a rampant beer almost faded now beyond all recognition.